Hi, I'm Charlie Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and the Frederick Health Hospital. Today we're going to talk about a case of a wire-induced spiral dissection uh, that caused acute shutdown of the RCA. We'll discuss the uh, parallel wire technique, uh, andrographic signs of a wire dissection, and go over pointers uh, for stenting uh, in uh, dissected vessels. The patient is a 70-year-old woman uh, with hypertension and hyperlipidemia. Uh, she smokes, uh, she has uh, end-stage renal disease, and is now newly on dialysis. Uh, she came to the ER with chest pain. Now, if you squint at the EKG, uh, you will see very subtle uh, sub-millimeter inferior ST elevations uh, that do not meet criteria uh, for STEMI. Her echo showed a low normal ejection fraction with inferior hypokinesis, and troponin was elevated at 0 0.74 uh, nanograms per mil. So on cath, uh, the LED has moderate uh, mid-segment disease. Uh, the circumflex was uh, diffusely diseased uh, with a severe stenosis in the OM2, uh, but the vessel is small. Uh, the RCA is shown here, and clearly the culprit is a critically severe stenosis uh, in the proximal RCA. So we went to work. Uh, we uh, used a JR4 guide and our trusty uh, BMW wire, uh, but the BMW uh, could not cross uh, the lesion. So we switched the uh, BMW wire out uh, to a uh, Pilot 50, uh, which is a hydrophilic wire, and uh, we uh, placed it through a fine cross microcatheter. Uh, the Pilot 50 wire did go a little bit further, uh, but now uh, there's no flow. Well, maybe the lesion is just so tight uh, that the wire is now occlusive. So um, are we just occlusive or are we actually now dealing with a wire dissection? Well, um, there are some signs uh, that favor a wire dissection. Uh, you're probably dealing with a dissection if your wire seems to be spiraling around the vessel, if it advances poorly, or uh, if it uh, does not enter any of the side branches. You're also probably dealing with a dissection if the vessel uh, shows contrast staining or if you actually see a dissection flap. And if you have a lot of ectopy, uh, your wire might have actually exited uh, the vessel architecture. Pull it back. Um, so for us, uh, our wire is uh, spiraling around the vessel, difficult to advance, and is not taking any side branches. There's no uh, clear contrast staining or dissection flap, but we do have loss of flow. The patient's uh, ST segments are also now starting to go up, and uh, she is complaining of chest pain. Yep, I think we have a wire dissection, and the RCA is going down. So one common technique uh, to uh, get out of this jam uh, is the uh, parallel wire technique. Uh, in this technique, uh, you leave your dissected wire in place. Uh, this will make it harder for another wire to enter the dissection plane. You then advance a second wire parallel to the dissected wire and try to enter the true lumen. Typically, uh, you choose a stiffer wire uh, for the parallel wire. Uh, that will give you more penetrating force. And then use a microcatheter. If you have a dual lumen microcatheter, such as a Suzuki uh, at your facility, that would even be better. Uh, since the angled exit of the second lumen will direct your parallel wire away uh, from the dissection plane. And as you're advancing the parallel wire, uh, minimize wire rotation uh, to reduce uh, wrapping around the first wire. Sometimes placing a microcatheter into the dissection itself can help. You can use the second microcatheter as a straw to aspirate the intramural hematoma and collapse the false lumen. Uh, this enlarges the true lumen and may make it easier for your parallel wire to re-enter. All right, so here we go. Uh, we uh, left our dissected wire in place and use a Pilot 200 wire as a parallel wire via a fine cross. And it seems like the Pilot 200 wire quickly found uh, its way through. Uh, we uh, did a distal contrast injection, and indeed, we are true lumen. Uh, distal contrast injection can sometimes be risky, though, uh, because if you're in the false lumen, you can dramatically enlarge it and make it very difficult to re-enter. Uh, contralateral injections are safer. However, uh, we did not have much of a choice in our case because there were no uh, left to right collaterals for opacifying the RCA using a contrast injection. Now, uh, we don't want to extend the dissection, obviously, so we're going to try to minimize contrast injections. We did do an injection here uh, to help decide on stent length. Uh, definitely not the prettiest angiogram. Uh, 
But we have a wire down, uh, so let's just stent this up and get out of here, all right? So um, a, a few words of advice uh, about stenting dissected vessels. Um, stenting dissected vessels is precarious and is not the same as stenting non-dissected vessels. Um, there is a high rate of both early and late complications. Uh, ballooning and stenting can cause extension of the hematoma and propagate the false lumen down the vessel. And appropriately sizing the stent uh, is difficult uh, because of the intramural hematoma. So in many cases, initially well-opposed stents can become mal-opposed later on as the uh, hematoma uh, resorbs. So a few pointers on PCI of a uh, dissected vessel. Predilation should be minimized. If you need to do it, uh, use a small balloon and keep it at low pressure. You don't want your predilation balloon to squish out the intramural hematoma and propagate the false lumen further down the vessel. And similarly, uh, don't oversize the stent. A large stent will also squish out the hematoma and extend the dissection. Dissected vessels can be hard to assess, and so um, consider using IVIS uh, to help uh, with stent sizing. Size the stent as best you can to the size of the vessel. This is one of the few situations where uh, I would actually suggest erring on the side of a smaller stent. Uh, next, uh, choose longer stents, uh, far longer than, than you would uh, for normal PCI, and significantly longer uh, than the dissected segment. Uh, you want the end of your stent to be in healthy tissue well beyond the end of the dissection. Why? Well, uh, this will help with pinning in the false lumen and prevent it from propagating. In fact, consider placing short stents uh, preemptively in normal segments, uh, proximal and distal to the dissection, uh, before you start uh, stenting the dissected segment. Uh, these uh, preemptive stents uh, can then act as barriers uh, to block a hematoma propagation uh, while you're working on the dissected segment. And finally, as with uh, predilation, uh, post-dilation in the dissected segment uh, should be uh, minimized, and if done, uh, kept at a low pressure. And remember, your aim in these cases is not angiographic perfection. Uh, it is uh, simply uh, to restore flow in your otherwise unstable patient. Now, perfect is the enemy of good, especially uh, in PCI of uh, dissected vessels. Okay, uh, so uh, let's uh, stent this up. Uh, we initially chose a long 3O by 38 millimeter DES, uh, but the long stent could not cross uh, even with a guideliner in place. So instead, uh, we used uh, two shorter overlapping stents, which did successfully cross. Uh, we actually thought about placing the proximal stent first uh, to uh, prevent back propagation of the dissection, but we ended up stenting distally first uh, because we were concerned that we would uh, have difficulty with the second stent uh, crossing. So uh, here is the result after stenting. Uh, definitely not great, uh, but uh, look at the angiogram carefully. Uh, first, uh, we noticed some staining uh, at the ostium and into the aorta. The uh, dissection had propagated and dissected back into the aorta, exactly what we were trying to avoid. And even worse, we are not even in the RCA. Our wire is in an acute marginal branch. Uh, you can see the dye staining spiraling down the dissection plane and tracing the outline of the RCA. A wave of nausea washed over uh, all of us, and colorful four-letter expressions of indignation uh, were heard all around the room. So very quickly, uh, we used a 3O by 15 millimeter DES to tack up the ostium of the RCA. This is to stop the continued propagation of the dissection further up the aorta. Now, this may not always work, and sometimes you'll need a covered stent. Uh, I go over this in another video of a dramatic case of aortic dissection uh, during an FFR procedure. We then passed a pilot 200 wire uh, via another fine cross uh, catheter into the contrast stain in the distal RCA. We then exchanged the pilot 200 to a Confianza Pro 12 wire and attempted to puncture back into the true lumen. Uh, this being a uh, community hospital, uh, we did not have the uh, stingray system available. And we got it. Uh, we're true lumen. Uh, this vessel looks like the PDA or a large uh, postolateral branch. 
We then uh, stented the RCA with a long 275 by 38 millimeter DES, which was uh, advanced with a lot of difficulty uh, through the freshly placed stents at the ostium and in the proximal RCA. And there was unfortunately some distal propagation of the dissection, uh, which we covered uh, with a 275 by 23 millimeter uh, DES. And finally, we did a gentle post dilation with a 3.0 uh, balloon. It, we did intentionally stay well away uh, from the distal edge to avoid even more downstream propagation of the dissection. And uh, here is the final angiographic result, which is reasonably satisfactory. Uh, the PDA was lost, uh, but we were able to save the large uh, postulateral system. Uh, the contrast in the false lumen will eventually resorb. Uh, the patient did reasonably well. Uh, she had mild chest pain overnight uh, that resolved by the next morning. Uh, we did a CTA, which thankfully showed no extension of the aortic dissection. Her troponin peaked at 34 nanograms per mil, and uh, she was discharged home uh, 48 hours later. All right, uh, take home messages. Uh, first, uh, respect hydrophilic wires. Uh, they can be your best friend, but they can also easily dissect and be your worst enemy. We went over signs of a wire dissection, uh, spiraling of the wire, poor advancement of the wire, and inability uh, to take side branches. A visible dissection flap, contrast staining, acute vessel, cl uh, vessel closure also point uh, to a dissection. Uh, we uh, discussed the uh, parallel wire technique to get back into true lumen, uh, choose a stiffer wire, use a microcatheter, and minimize uh, wire rotation. Uh, we also went over pointers uh, for stenting in dissected vessels. In general, uh, use longer stents, uh, be very gentle uh, in pre-dilating and post-dilating, and consider uh, preemptively stenting in healthy tissue uh, to bracket the dissection. And finally, and it may be very hard sometimes, uh, but be aware of where your uh, wire is. Thank you for watching.